What comes to mind when you hear the phrase nuclear disaster? You probably think of the worst case scenarios, which are the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. But today, we're not talking about nuclear detonations, we're talking about nuclear reactor meltdowns. While a nuclear meltdown does not result in a Hiroshima-style detonation, its consequences are undeniably severe. It can be equally as catastrophic and can cause unparalleled amounts of damage. Just look at the 1986 Chernobyl disaster as an example. Although the term nuclear meltdown is not officially recognized by the United States or the International Atomic Energy Agency, there is a scale in place to assess the severity of such incidents. This scale ranges from 0 to 7, with 0 indicating a negligible event with no discernible impact, and 7 representing a major catastrophe akin to the aforementioned disasters. A level 7 event involves significant health and environmental damage, leading to the abandonment of cities and the destruction of landmarks. But what exactly is a nuclear meltdown? Before we can get into that, we have to explain how a nuclear power plant works. You see, in a regular nuclear reactor, controlled heat is used inside to help generate power. However, when the heat becomes unmanageable, it can lead to the reactor melting and releasing contaminants into its surroundings. This is the fundamental distinction between a functioning nuclear reactor and a meltdown scenario. The nuclear power plant operates similarly to a coal-burning power plant. In the case of coal, it is burned to produce heat, which in turn boils water and creates pressurized steam. This steam is then directed towards a turbine that drives a generator, ultimately generating electricity. The same thing happens in a nuclear power plant. However, the process differs in how the heat is produced. In a nuclear power plant, the heat is generated through an induced fission reaction that takes place inside the reactor. In case you don't know, fission is the splitting of an atom, which releases a significant amount of heat and energy. Certain materials, such as uranium and other radioactive elements, undergo spontaneous fission at a very slow rate, even without any human intervention. This inherent property makes them ideal for nuclear activities, and also explains why they are naturally radioactive. Within the nuclear reactor, controlled conditions are maintained to induce fission reactions, leading to the release of heat. This heat is then used to convert water into steam, which drives the turbine and generates electricity. It is crucial to carefully control and manage the fission process to ensure the safe operation of a nuclear power plant. In a power plant, this operation is hastened by shooting neutrons at uranium-filled fuel rods, also known as nuclear fuel. These neutrons are produced as a result of previous fission reactions that occur when uranium atoms split apart. This sets in motion a self-sustaining cycle, a chain reaction. It is important to note that the operation of a nuclear power plant is carefully controlled to prevent an uncontrolled chain reaction. The goal is to maintain a stable and controlled level of fission reactions, ensuring the safe and efficient generation of electricity. The process relies on precise regulation to avoid any catastrophic effects that could endanger the world. By maintaining the appropriate conditions, the reactions can be controlled to produce a desired amount of heat. This heat, in turn, causes water to boil, generating steam, and ultimately leading to the production of electricity. The process operates cyclically, with each stage building upon the previous one to sustain the power generation. Now you don't want the temperature of the reactor to get too high, or it will start to cause some serious damage. No, that's a lot of damage! A significant increase in temperature releases harmful radiation, which damages or pretty much destroys everything it gets to. This is why a coolant is used inside the core of the reactor, Typically, water is used as the coolant in nuclear reactors. Its primary function is to moderate the temperatures and ensure stability. The coolant circulates through the core, absorbing the heat generated during the fission reactions. By absorbing the excess heat, the coolant helps prevent the temperature from escalating to dangerous levels. Once the coolant absorbs the heat, it carries it away from the reactor core to a different location or system. This heat transfer process helps in dissipating the excess thermal energy and maintaining a controlled temperature range within the reactor. Just like a car engine when it overheats, it can cause damage to other parts of the vehicle. In such cases, turning off the engine and allowing it to cool down is a common solution. 
Once the engine is shut off, it cannot generate additional heat. Radioactive materials in a nuclear reactor are a different story. Even if the reactor is shut down, these materials, including uranium and other irradiated substances, continue to undergo decay processes. The decay of radioactive materials is an inherent property that persists, regardless of whether the reactor is operational or not. This ongoing decay process releases radiation and heat. It is the same idea of the chain reaction that grants us the energy that brings an environmental catastrophe because these materials can't be contained or stopped, which is why they say prevention is easier than treatment. Before a nuclear meltdown occurs, there is something called a partial nuclear meltdown that happens first. The first things to melt are the fuel rods themselves. If the situation can be saved up to that point, it's classified as a partial nuclear meltdown. A notable example of a partial nuclear meltdown occurred in 1979 at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. In this incident, the core of the Unit 2 reactor experienced a meltdown, causing damage to the fuel rods and a release of radioactive gases. Fortunately, the containment structure surrounding the core remained intact preventing a catastrophic core meltdown, which is when nuclear fuel melts through the pressure vessel and breaches the containment, potentially causing more extensive release of radioactive materials. Despite the partial meltdown, the Unit 1 reactor at the Three Mile Island power plant continued to generate power until its shutdown in 2019. This reactor had the capacity to produce over 800 megawatts of environmentally friendly electricity and employed a workforce of more than 600 individuals for a single unit. It is worth noting that the Three Mile Island incident emphasized the importance of robust containment structures and safety measures in nuclear power plants. The incident served as a catalyst for significant improvements in reactor design and safety protocols to prevent and mitigate potential accidents in the future. Keep in mind that a partial nuclear meltdown can worsen into a total nuclear meltdown if left unchecked. Once that happens, it's time to panic. It becomes a race against time as emergency teams attempt to cool off the core remnants before they melt through the protective layers or even the building itself. The Chernobyl disaster in 1986 stands as the most severe total nuclear meltdown in history. In this incident, the reactor core at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine experienced a complete meltdown. The molten radioactive material from the core began to burn through the protective layers and posed a significant risk of contaminating the groundwater and causing further damage. Emergency teams in Russia responded to the disaster by attempting to flood the basement of the power plant with water to cool down the molten material and prevent it from breaching the containment building. Additionally, efforts were made to cover the damaged reactor with a concrete sarcophagus known as the Chernobyl Shelter to contain the spread of radioactive materials. In 2016, the Chernobyl shelter was replaced with the Chernobyl New Safe Confinement. This structure provides a safer and more secure environment for the ongoing cleanup and dismantling efforts, aiming to contain the hazardous legacy of the site. The most recent disaster that occurred was the 2011 Fukushima disaster. The Japanese power plant suffered a meltdown following a devastating earthquake and tsunami that disrupted its cooling system. The release of radioactive materials forced people to evacuate and renewed concerns regarding nuclear safety. As a result of this fiasco, nuclear plants were shut down in Japan, and the Tokyo Electric Power Company paid one of the largest criminal fines in history, a staggering $95 billion. In the simplest of terms, meltdown prevention just comes down to heat and a vital cooling system even when all fission processes have been brought to a halt. The Fukushima incident serves as a poignant reminder of this reality, as the fuel rods were promptly submerged and fission reactions ceased within a mere 10 minutes. This is why high-level radioactive waste is a huge problem. It takes tens of thousands of years to decay to a safe level. During that time, they need a coolant system or sufficient containment measures, or else they'll burn right through anything. Proper maintenance and moderators are key to safety. Past designs have been proven to be quite prone to meltdowns. Fukushima and Three Mile Island used water not only as a coolant, but also as a moderator. A moderator decreases the speed of fast neutrons, making them more likely to collide with fissionable fuel components and less likely to collide with non-fissionable components. In simpler words, a moderator increases the likelihood that fission will occur in the reactor. In Chernobyl, they used solid graphite instead of water. In both cases, fission did not stop. To establish and uphold stringent nuclear safety standards, the International Atomic Energy Agency plays a pivotal role. 
they implement clear and precise guidelines to prevent further catastrophes and offer assistance in the event of emergencies. Additionally, they conduct regular reviews and assessments of nuclear facilities to ensure the safe operation of these establishments, mitigating the risk of critical failures. In all seriousness, we recommend watching the HBO miniseries Chernobyl. It serves as a remarkable depiction of the true horrors of a nuclear meltdown disaster. Through its portrayal, viewers gain insight into the devastating impact of radiation poisoning on both individuals and the environment, providing a stark reminder of the catastrophic consequences associated with such events. Are you familiar with any meltdown disasters from history? If so, which one do you think is the worst? And finally, if you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment about what we should discuss next. See you in the next one.